Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a bridal, a lovely bridal timeless makeup. And I'm doing one of those once a year. This year is no exception. So yeah, this is what we're doing. Um, the thing is, the idea is that when you look at your pictures in maybe like 20 years, you're not gonna cringe, you know, like <laughs> that was the trend back then. No, no, this is gonna be a fresh makeup, um, Sort of in in 20 years time you know and uh, this uh, tutorial is going to be a voice through tutorial because i haven't done one in no while and uh, some people have told me that they love to see me talking and explaining throughout the video and i'm gonna try to do more of those but i cannot promise that um that's you know every video is going to be like that because it's easier for me to film and then do record the voice and uh, it's not so time cons consuming and i have you know less time on my hands nowadays um anyway i hope you understand i hope you like the the look because this is what it is about on my channel and uh yeah let's let's start so before your wedding day, before your makeup, you know, on your wedding day, you have to make sure that you did all the right things for your skin. Like clean it, find the right moisturizer for it, um, because the makeup is going to look exactly like, like your skin, you know. If you took care of your skin, then your makeup is going to look great. I promise you. So first step is to clean your skin. I'm always using a micellar water. This one is from Garnier. I really do like it. The pink one as well. I love it and um, I'm using just the cotton pad to sort of erase everything and I already did that and uh, that's why I'm not doing I'm not doing it again um, then I am plumping my skin I'm applying a moisturizer to plump up my skin to, to um, moisturize my skin as I've said and also my lips and for that I'm using I'm starting with the lips. I'm using from Essence a coconut uh, kiss carrying lip peeling, and this is um, this is a good product, and it's a peeling, but I'm leaving it on my lips throughout the video. I'm applying it with a Q-tip or with like a brush because this is also what I'm using on my client. Any small brush will do. That's it. Then in terms of moisturizer, I'm gonna use two. Um, from La Roche Posay, which is my favorite brand. Uh, one is very hydrating. This one is the Effaclar Matte, which you know is gonna mattify um, the area where you put it. So this matte one, I'm gonna put first. Gonna apply it just on my T-zone, as I've said, to mattify it because this is the area where I get oily. So you know your skin best, and if you like uh, notice that like in one hour or two hours after applying makeup, one area or the other tends to get greasy, then most likely you have oily skin there and you have to be careful what you apply on that area. But I know here I'm like um, normal to dry and underneath my eyes as well. So I'm going to use this hydrating cream and this is very light in consistency. I love this one so, so much. I'm using it every day. And this I'm just gonna apply underneath my eyes, gently pat it into the skin and the sides of my face. Then to be a bit extra, I'm gonna apply a face primer, which I'm not always going for, but I have to say for a very important event, I recommend you use it. And I'm just gonna apply it on my T-zone because this is mattifying, and this is from Catrice Prime and Fine, Pore Refining Anti-Shine Base. Right, those products need to really get into the skin, like not sit on top of the skin, don't put too much because it's not, you know, we have the impression that it's gonna, it's gonna be better if we apply more, but it's not. Um, it really can ruin your makeup. It can look a bit uh, greasy after a while, you know, if it's like a very hydrating cream or anything like that. So push it really well into the skin, massage it and um, just a small amount it's enough then we are going to do the eyes but before we do that i like to apply pads for my eyes this is a really nice uh, a really nice one hydrogel eye patch and it contains vitamin c water glycerol and 
some other good stuff. And um, this is for plumping up the area here underneath the eyes and catching any fallout. And they are going to stay here until I do, you know, the, the lid, the lid makeup. So before we start with the makeup, you should know a few things. And most importantly, you shouldn't use any SPF and even low SPF, mm, but I would say no SPF on your wedding day. No SPF in your foundation, in your in your moisturizer, in your concealer, in your powder, in anything you put on, you know, as a base on your face because you're gonna get flashback. I know, I know, maybe it's sunny, maybe whatever. You just have to take care that you don't get a sunburn, but other than that, it's just one day. Then I like to start with the eyes. I always start with the eyes, but especially on a very important event, uh, I don't want to have, you know, fallout and I like a very clean under eye area. So that's why I'm starting with the eyes, at least for the upper part of the eye. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prime now the eyelids and I'm always, always priming with a proper primer and not with concealer because concealer is gonna crease, it's gonna crease no matter how much powder you put on top and I feel like um, on top of concealer, even if it's like powdered down, the blending is not so good. So I'm applying now the eye primer, which is the Soft Ochre from MAC, you already, already know I love this. Don't put too much because it's not needed and it might crease any product that's too much is gonna crease the same with concealer on the eyes now for the actual eye look which is gonna be a very simple one but sort of you know um, sort of girly I think uh, with a bit of eyeliner um, for the eye look I'm going to take this palette from be perfect with jar did I show you the cover with jar makeup artist I love be perfect cosmetics it has a black in it <laughs> it has a black in it i love this and i'm gonna take a transition shade now which is gonna be peach out it's the color that's gonna um, give a bit of definition in the crease area which is this area right underneath the brow bone so i'm taking a brush this is the Eva Eye Blender 225. It's like a smaller blending brush um, because I want to be a bit more precise, that's why. And I'm holding the brush like this and not here because if I hold it like this, I'm gonna have too much precision and I'm gonna um, you know, be prone to press too hard into my skin and harsh lines and all that. We don't want that. Um, you want to hold the, the brush up here and have your motions very very like feather like you don't want to go too much and to like at least not um with this step you know you want a very very blended blown out sort of effect here in this area this outer part here where the mobile lid is um it's going to be the most intense area and as you go inwards it's going to fade out that color is going to fade out you know into nothing you don't want to go too far upside uh, outside the um the mobile lid keep it um, nice and neat there and if you need to go further you know to to blend it out more then you have that space and um for a bridal look it should be not too much, not over the top, anyways. The brush is rounded, so you can do this motion as well. You can go backwards and, and forwards, and um, it allows this motion as well. It's a really good brush, I love it. Now after we did that, we move to the other eye because we want some symmetry. We don't want one eye to look different than the other. So one step at a time for both eyes. Now for the next step, I'm going to take a combination between between two shades, this one and this one. I'm going to use more of this one than the other one. Yeah, I'm going to do that combination. 
I will combine forces and I'm gonna keep this more concentrated here um, on the outer part so I'm not gonna go too much inwards with it but you know slightly just a bit and um, apply this more to the mobile to the outer corner of the mobile lid here's gonna be the main area where I'm applying this shade and it's going into that orangey peachy shade but not as high as that one so we want to create like a transition and this is the way to do it I'm putting it into my corner because I want the most of it I don't want a wash of color I want I want it to do what it can the best it can you know and then here the edge of it just go over it with the brush when you don't have much product left and maybe with the finger as well if you've put too much and blend that out hold it here up here you don't need to punch your eye Right, so for the rest of my mobile lid, where I've, I haven't put really anything but my base, um, I'm going to take another eyeshadow, let's see, I think I'm going to, mm, no, yeah, I think I'm going to apply this one, um, low key, and it's, it's like a brownie pink, maybe, uh, I'm not really sure, we'll see after applying it, how it translates on my skin. Um, I took like a flat brush and now I want to hold my brush here and not up here necessarily because I want to pat this into my skin and I want precision um, I'm not gonna do like a proper cut crease or anything like that but I'm gonna follow the crease line there where it folds where it meets the brow bone do like I'm doing like a rounded shape and I'm slightly going over the matte color we've used the last time on the lid just, and this is just one layer if I want to to do it really really intense I'll just take a bit more and reapply it But mostly here in this area and not so much here where we want the transition this is so easy to apply and with the brush and the brush is not wet whoa this is amazing I love Be Perfect Cosmetics. I love them. I have two palettes, this one and the other one that's Carnival palette it's called, I think. Um, so good. And this one, this has it all. It's like a dream for me, you know. Neutral colors, black as well, and um, mattes and shimmery ones as well. And if you want like, you know, to be playful a bit, you have that green there, the gray color as well. I love it. We are finished with that. I'm gonna take off the pads and then I'm gonna do eyeliner, 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 but with eyeshadow. Um, I'm not gonna use a proper eyeliner, I'm gonna use um, eyeshadow because it's softer and I feel like um, if you like, it's, it's harder to screw up a eyeshadow liner you know and uh, we are going to start off with uh, too much which is a like a matte brown and then on top of it I'm gonna go with the black but um, not so thick it's gonna be the black is gonna be just a little there now um, we are going to do a small flick like a kitten flick today we're not gonna go for that very extreme look I'm gonna do first the lid you know the eyeliner for the lid it's not going to be very very thick just on the thinner side and with a kitten flick at the um, end start here with an angled brush which is from Zoeva as well and I'm holding it like this and then for this part I'm turning it 
if you don't want a flick, stop here. No problem. And now we're gonna concentrate on doing the flick. Um, looking straight ahead, it's best because you see exactly where you know how to trace how to trace that um, flick, how the direction of it should be. And for me, I have this line here, the crease line, it stops here. So I always go slightly underneath it um, because I don't want it to sort of look like a comma, you know. So slightly underneath it. I'm going to take the black and go over the eyeliner, keep it at the roots of my lashes. And I have a bit of fallout, I'm sort of a bit sorry that I took off my pads, but I will clean that because I don't have any base and that's the reason why I always do first the eyes. You might have noticed that I didn't go all the way in with the eyeliner this time. I'm keeping it, you know, I want to elongate a bit the eye shape so that's why I'm just applying it here on this area um, the outer half sort of also this is a really good trick if you're not so good at eyeliner to apply first either like a soft brown cool or an um, eyeshadow with the with the brush and then on top of that when you're happy with the shape go with the gel eyeliner or with, with a liquid eyeliner but first do the mapping out of your eyeliner then on top of that with the hardcore stuff so to say right um, now I'm going to put mascara on and then lashes I'm gonna use now the Essence Bye Bye Panda Eyes and um, I like this actually more than I did at first because it's sort of it's like thicker now after I don't know, maybe two months of using it and it's waterproof you want something that doesn't give you panda eyes hence the name of the product I'm gonna put false lashes. I always recommend on your wedding day wearing false lashes but individuals. Those are from Ardell. I don't know what I did with the yeah with the case. The Ardell, the individuals in medium and they are not free. Um, they don't have that knot here where the lashes meet. Because I have eyeliner, I will take a black what's this called adhesive <laughs> leave it there maybe for like one minute until it becomes tacky and the edges black i'm always starting with the outer corner but not with the last lash i want to apply with like the one before it hold it like this and when you dip it into the glue you want to dip it just with the outer part of it not with the inner part because that's going to be visible and uh, the glue tends to be a bit shiny so i'm always like taking off the excess if i have some the glue just remains on the curl so to say and then you want to apply them right on the lash at the root of the lash but not on the skin said on the outer corner on the lash not on the skin because it's gonna stain that black glue it's gonna look like a dot on your on your skin and you don't want that now it's not that problematic because we're wearing eyeliner but if you're not wearing eyeliner it's gonna be visible not ideal now for foundation, I'm gonna use my favorite one from Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay In Place Foundation and the shades are Sand and Dawn. They have like a, like a yellowish undertone. I'm like in between shades. If it's like on clients, I have like a metal palette where I mix shades. The face brush, a smaller one because I have a small face. From Real Techniques, it has this sort of rounded shade so that I can buff the product into my skin. Don't forget the neck, okay? Don't forget to buff a bit of that foundation onto the neck as well. I love this foundation. It's on the 
on the matte side more so I will not need to powder very much um, just the areas where I put a bronzer or anything like that because I don't want it to sort of be looking streaky so I will powder my t-zone my forehead of course because I don't want to be greasy looking you know for the nose I'm just gonna take um, sponge because I don't know for some reason the nose doesn't accept brushes so I'm taking the same mix and pat it into the skin like push it push the product into the skin I have a bit of redness here from birth it doesn't really bother me like at all it never did never will but now and again I do cover it a bit not completely because I don't want to put their foundation and on the other side not but um, I'm like I don't know cleaning my brush or my sponge onto that area and call it quits then for concealer I'm going to go for the pro concealer um, HD something from LA girl this is in the shade medium I rarely use the shade light and that's just in winter and you know when I'm the most pale I don't apply too much like this and like this and we'll just leave it for now and blend that into the skin and see how much i need further i'm using the same sponge the other side to push the product into the skin and mostly on this area where i'm a bit dark and here i have this coloration most have so be careful here around the eyeshadow unless you want to do that really sharp edge you know then go with the with the sponge like this and concealer and the uh, blemishes i'm just gonna leave <laughs> just gonna leave because they don't bother me powder on top this one from maybelline um this is a baking and brightening powder i'm not baking as you know anyways i'm just gonna take a slight amount on a brush which i love this is the glow up actually this is a um, a highlighter brush from beauty bay um, and it's really cheap and good so good so i'm putting the product here the powder i mean and slightly tapping it over the skin here what i have left i have like a set new finish and i want to keep that and then here on the other side and then what's left on the cheek area. I'm not putting pressure onto my skin. I'm just pressing slightly and lightly. And on the forehead, I need to be putting a bit more because it's greasy. The bronzer I was talking about is from NYX and yeah, I think I'm gonna mix those two. But be careful, this is really, really pigmented. I want to show you the brushes I'm normally using for um, for bronzing. This one is from Ziva, a 127 Luxe Sheer Cheek. Um, so you can use it for like blusher, for bronzer. I love it because it's small and it's angled. And the bristles are long-ish, but not very long. It's not very uh, dense. That's why I love it because it sort of bends like this easily and you can apply, it glides over the skin so nicely. And it has this shorter end here and the longer end here. That's why it's angled and it's made like this for a reason. You dip into the color with this end, the shorter one, and this one is gonna blend as you go. And uh, I always start with the cheekbone here for bronzing, you know, the cheekbone on top of the cheekbone and go um, towards the mouth because I want to elongate my, my face. I want to sort of make it elongated. But if you go like this, you know, sort of um, hug your cheeks, um, then you're gonna plump up this area. You're gonna sort of lift it, but it, it's gonna look plump here. I don't necessarily go for that look. That's why I go for like a sort of straight line towards the mouth, but I stop right about here. It goes really faded into that area. I, I don't like that line touching my lips. So I'm gonna mix those two with this shorter end gonna take most of it on the back of my hand start here you know where I've said and go towards the mouth 
and this is the motion I'm doing with this brush. I'm not going backwards because when you go backwards with this sort of brush, it's not made for that. It's gonna sort of skip a bit, you know? If you press it and then go backwards, it's gonna skip a bit because this, um, this is longer than the other end. It's gonna look uneven and patchy. So you can go like quick, but you do a flick, lift it, flick, lift it, flick, lift it, flick, lift it, you know, really quick but in just one direction, this one, you know, towards the longer end. You can give a bit of definition with, um, with bronzer, but mainly you want to give yourself a 3D effect to your face because you took that off with foundation, you know, you, you covered everything with one color and you look, we all look, two-dimensional with just foundation also we want to bring the 3d effect back i'm creating like a triangle here imagine lines here and here and they meet here somewhere the most intensity is here on the brow bone where the hairline is and going faded towards the mouth i hope i'm making sense for me i have a really small forehead so if i'm putting bronzer on my forehead it's going to be very very little just here following the hairline slightly and very lightly because i don't want to make it look even more narrow i want a bit of balance mainly here if i'm putting bronzer on the sides of my forehead you know and that's about it and then the jawline with a residue on the brush i'm just gonna follow the jawline a bit make it more contoured looking and then blend it into the skin on the neck. You could use another brush, which is this one, for example. This is like a, a, a lot bigger version of this one. It's sort of the same shape, like coned. It has this point here, and it's also a bit flimsy. It's not very dense, and it's cut like this all around it, so that it makes it really easy to go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Dip it into the product, take the most of it on the back of your hand, and then start here. And just this half of it, that so um it's cut like this should touch the skin you know and the rest the bristles here are going to blend that out you know as it goes if you hold it here you're gonna be softer on gentler on your skin the color of the bronzer should be more on the warm side because bronzer is meant to make you look sun-kissed and whereas um, use a color like this this is more grayish like a grayish brown and this is definitely just for contouring which comes next into play so contouring is sculpting your face um, it's giving shadow because it's a grayish color shadows are gray this is for example a brush that's meant for contouring because it's small it uh, fits into this area here just the tip of it i'm gonna dip it into that product Take the most of it on the back of your hand and then you only need to apply it here sort of to deepen up that area and that's going to push back that area. Do the same motion of, although you can do it like this but if you do it like this um, it's going to fade out nicely you know into this area here and um, you want to follow with this color the hollow basically underneath the cheekbone right underneath the cheekbone you want to apply shadow on the areas that you want to hide you want to push back whereas where you put um, highlighter that area is going to be brought forward now i'm going to take my blusher which is from l'oreal it's one of my favorites and uh, I, because of the color and also the the uh, consistency the powder is really nice and this is sandalwood pink and this is la blush number 120 and i'm going to take it with a sort of larger brush although i'm not a big fan of larger brushes because my face is so small um but this one is okay because it's for the the blusher it's from real techniques uh, blush brush <laughs> and this is also shaped like this round you can do circular motions with a rounded brush you can do backwards and forwards motions you know like buffing motions uh, as i've said 
um, and the bristles are long. That means it's not that stiff. So the placement of the blush is really important because it's gonna mess with the shape of your face if you place it wrong. The color is also really important to go with the whole look. And uh, I like to place it right above the bronzer, like here in this area mostly and fading out into the hairline as well. And then um, I like to apply it in two layers. The first one being more, more diffused and softer and the second one more concentrated just in the middle of the first layer. Then um, highlighter. Normally I would apply highlighter before applying the blush and then on top going with the blush but the blush has a bit of sparkles in it so it's gonna the highlighter is gonna blend into this uh, product into the blusher no problem no problem now i'm gonna take the highlight from hourglass um this is one of my favorite luminous light is called and uh it looks like this um it has like a slight luminosity to it but it's not like overpowering be seen from the moon kind of highlighter that's not my thing i would not recommend that on your wedding day i mean it looks so outdated it emphasizes fine lines hairs on your face and the um you know the texture of your skin i'm taking the powder brush again when the light hits your face you can see exactly where it shines where the skin shines a bit it has luminosity and there you want to put the highlighter and nowhere else i'm gonna take mostly on the back of my hand and start here on this area here i'm going to do like a c shape and here if you have like fine lines that are a bit deeper or like wrinkles or anything like that don't put highlighter don't put highlighter just keep it just skip highlighter because that's gonna emphasize everything you have there and you if you don't want that then just keep it sack it i'm not gonna contour my nose today because i don't want um for a classic for a classic very subtle sort of bridal makeup look um I don't want that. If you do like that, if it's your thing, go ahead and do it now. Um, and then um, I'm gonna move on to the eyes again and then do my brows and my lips. So the eyes, what have I used? This palette was um, from Be Perfect. Again, this is clientele, clientele palette. And I'm gonna take again this, um, I, no, do you know what? I'm gonna take a bit of that brown and this one and I'm gonna mix them. And that's gonna be the underline, so to say. I like to use a flat brush for underneath. But I don't wanna go too far with it. You can go as far as you like. Um, but for this look, I want to keep it like fresh, I think. I'm just taking that light shade, which is peach out, going over it, but mostly um, over the edge of it. And leaving like a darker part right at the roots of my lashes. With the lower lash line, I'm going as far as my lashes go when I want to look like fresh. And if I want to be more dramatic, then I'm going further downwards. Right, I think we can apply mascara now. I will apply very very good one giga black extended mascara waterproof because we need all the help we can get because it's maybe hot outside maybe you're crying whatever um and i like to apply it more going from be careful um from inwards and here on this side and then sort of wiggle and pull wiggle pull wiggle at the roots of them, you know? With what's left, sort of, go through the lashes to sort of make them look more realistic, more real. If you're doing your makeup, I think um, you definitely should buy a few high-end products that really, really work. I mean, for me, it would be this mascara, it would be the foundation 
that's perfection um, brushes they are very very important uh, concealer of course and uh, some good eye base and some um, eyeshadows now for the brush I'm gonna take powder just because uh, lately I've been using powder but you can use whatever product um, you like just keep it soft keep it soft if you saw the mess I did here uh, oh, um, I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Pro Palette and it looks like this inside. I'm always starting with a flick of with the you know outer half here underneath it and here on top with like what's left on the brush because I don't want too much there. I don't want to block out this area here. I don't like that. I don't like it when the brow looks like square or like really bulky and blocky i like to elongate with my brows i feel like they are not long enough but just lighting like very very naturally looking you know especially for this occasion The product I'm gonna use is the Eye Artist Kajal from Our Store in Earth Shimmer. It, it has a bit of shimmer in it, but it's not gonna be visible. And I'm just lightly going over that inner rim, inner rim. This is the waterline underneath, and this is inner rim. Yeah, this would be the face. And now let's do the lips. I want to use a lipstick that's from Stila found it. Um, I have two ones that I bought from Stila and uh, one is a bit darker than the other one and um, one is called Angelo Angelo and one is Sonata. They are very very similar color wise but one is, um, is a bit lighter than the other one and it's really not my color and this one is a bit darker and I love the color. I'm not gonna line my lips, I'm gonna do the lining with the uh, lipstick. So I'm back with uh, the same face but with the hair down. I hope that you like this look and uh, the fact that it was a uh, very rich in information video and uh, tell me if you do have some suggestions, if you did like it, anything like that down below and follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Vero. I am there and I post uh, more now than I did before. Um, I hope that you like my pages. Check them out. I'll see you in three weeks because I'm going to be away on holiday and um, I don't have anything pre-filmed and I just don't want to stress out. I want to have my holiday and, you know, you're going to see what I do on my Instagram, Facebook and Vera page if you go there. Until next, bye.